E. False religion. A distorted understanding of God and or a distorted way to be reconciled to God. There are many types of false religion, all inspired by Satan. They can be vastly different from one another, but they all have a common element. They all reject the God of the Bible and or salvation by faith through Jesus, the Son of God. Satan is happy to let people believe anything else. I want to give you a bird's eye view of the primary types of religions just so you can be more protected from them, know the differences so you can help guide others out of them, and notice if any of these beliefs are lingering around in your car. First, there is monotheism. Mono, meaning one, and theos, meaning God. This is what Christianity teaches, but it teaches a Trinitarian monotheism. By contrast, Islam, Judaism, Jehovah's Witnesses, and Oneness Pentecostals all teach a Unitarian monotheism. Both teach that there is only one God, but the latter teaches God is singular, Unitarian, and simple in nature, rather than tripartite, triune, and complex in nature. In so doing, they also reject the deity of Jesus as the eternal word or son of God that became flesh to die for the sins of the world. Polytheism, from poly, meaning many, and theism, meaning God, is the belief in many gods or divine beings. Examples of this include the Greco-Roman, Canaanite, and Egyptian pantheons the millions of manifestations of the Hindu gods, and even Mormonism, though Mormons claim they worship only the one over this planet. Next, there is pantheism, from pan, meaning all, and theos, meaning God, which is a way of seeing that identifies everything with God and God with everything. The largest example of the belief today is Hinduism. Panentheism from N, meaning in, also holds that the world and universe are included in God, but maintains that God is more than these things, and that the divine can be both transcendent or out there, as well as the quote-unquote divine within. The last category of religious beliefs I'll mention here is animism, from the word anime, which means spirits, which is the belief in a myriad of spirit beings who are concerned with human affairs and are capable of helping or harming people's interests. Modern popular examples of this include New Age, tribal religions, Wicca, shamanism, paganism, and Native American beliefs. The following table summarizes the belief and a few examples. This table is also included in the PDF companion. Belief. Monotheism. Summary. One God. Example. Christianity, Judaism, or Islam. Belief. Polytheism. Summary. Many gods. Example. Greco-Roman pantheon. Belief. Pantheism. Summary. All is God. Example. Hinduism and some New Age. Belief. Panentheism. Summary. All is within God. Example. Buddhism and some Hinduism. Belief. Animism. Summary. Many spirits. Example. New Age. Shinto or Wicca. Belief. Atheism. Summary. No gods. Example. Naturalism and secularism. But what about atheism? The word atheism as a belief system dates back to the 1570s. It comes from atheos, 
meaning godless or ungodly, from a, meaning without, and theos, meaning God. Atheists often argue that human beings are religious creatures. We were designed as not only physical and soulish, but also spiritual. We are religious. We do worship. The self-aware atheists acknowledge this. The specific behaviors that religious people do can be replaced with secular or irreligious activities, but the behaviors themselves are still being performed. For example, we can worship God, many gods or spirit beings, ourselves like a god, nature like a god, ourselves like we are all that there is, or any enjoyable intellectual or emotionally stimulating activity like that's all that there is to life. But our heart, mind, and soul will be devoted to something. And for it to be the fulfilling long term, it will need to be a cause that is beyond ourselves, that connects us to something larger. We will develop beliefs about that thing, we will organize with others who share those beliefs, and we will dedicate ourselves to improving our knowledge and experience of that thing. This pursuit is spiritual. It is a form of worship to dedicate ourselves and essentially the meaning of our lives to serve whatever we view to be a worthwhile goal or a higher purpose. These organized sets of beliefs and accompanying practices are, at their essence, religion. Satan knows this. In fact, any time we worship something, anything, other than God, it is a form of idolatry. I'm not suggesting that all careers, hobbies, and interests are all idols, but they certainly can be. And if they come before God, or if aspects of them have greater devotion from us than God does, then it is serving as an idol in our lives. Remember that any potential idol in our lives is a foothold, and any form of idolatry actually indirectly gives worship to Satan. We are worshiping the world and the things in the world of that which he is the prince of. This type of idolatry Christians are more likely to be susceptible to because of how easily Satan can influence us to do so, and our acquiescence often goes unnoticed. All false religions and religious beliefs distort or undermine essential truths necessary to properly know who God is, who we are, what the purpose of life is, why there is suffering and death in the world, and what can be done about it. Since every human longs for answers to these questions, every religion and sociological philosophy attempts to answer them, and Satan has provided some common denominators amongst them. Religions seek to reconcile the chasm between where we are now with suffering to where we would like to be without suffering through the following. 1. Earning rewards through loving acts, good deeds, or religious efforts. 2. Gaining knowledge or enlightenment through mystical means. 3. Loss of the self or ego or individual through meditation and spiritual discipline. Or 4. Hedonism. Making the most of life now through an emphasis on temporary, worldly pleasure-seeking without concern for eternal spirituality or deeper meaning. The following table compares all four of these items. These four are included in the companion PDF. 
philosophy, legalism, description of behavior, earn salvation through law-keeping, good deeds, or religious efforts, philosophy, Gnosticism, description of behavior, find salvation through secret or hidden external knowledge and mysticism, philosophy, enlightenment, description of behavior, unlock salvation within by destroying the ego or the self and all human desires, philosophy, Hedonism, description of behavior, indulge in carnal pleasures and pursue natural desires in this life alone. All of these worldview philosophies deny the biblical foundations we've learned so far. At their core, they all lack the entire premise of the simple gospel, the basis of us being separated from the one true God due to our sin, and our restoration back to God, achieved through faith in the sacrificial death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. This simple declaration, the gospel, cuts to the heart of every single false worldview. If you remember this fact alone, you will be able to see through all of these other philosophies. They can get quite complex. Hundreds of categories could be listed, but I boiled it down so you can see their foundations. Legalism. The first of these, and perhaps the best one of the four, ultimately false options, religious legalism, at least recognizes that loving acts, good deeds, and religious efforts are part of the solution. This at least gets people listening to their conscience, trying to do good, and seeking meaning, purpose, and maybe even the true God. The problem is that can often lead to legalism rather than Christ. The true path to restoration with God is freedom from monotonous religious law-keeping in an effort to earn favor with God. If Satan can't get us completely off of the reservation, then he will settle for us not seeing the beauty of God and of the gospel and have us putting our trust in our own efforts instead. Our faith would then be in ourselves rather than God. We need to believe what God says, that we are worse sinners than we think. We need more than just a little religious effort. We need a Savior, and then spiritual empowerment to live it out. This philosophy also grossly distorts who God is and why we were created. We were made for God's glory and for relationship, not just to be mindless, obedient robots that follow all the rules. Religious legalism will only make us a miserable replica, doing outward good, perhaps, but inwardly still a wreck who is actually still spiritually dead and very far from God. Our desire in religious obedience would be to avoid punishment, or perhaps we would rightly believe that God's way is best. However, it still wouldn't be interpersonal or relational. We would not be seeking relationship with God, because being created for God's glory and knowing God through the glory of the Son for eternity is not even being considered as the purpose of our existence. We are not to know God primarily through the law. It is through grace we are justified and set free from the slavery of sin. So quote-unquote Christianized religious legalism is one of the great threats to your journey. Satan uses it to deceive believers who are not trusting in faith to believe they're saved. It can easily creep in or remain in. Throw it out. Galatians 5.1 It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm, then, 
and do not be encumbered once more by a yoke of slavery. Take notice, I, Paul, tell you that if you let yourselves be circumcised, Christ will be of no value to you at all. Again, I testify to every man who gets himself circumcised that he is obligated to obey the whole law. You who are trying to be justified by the law have been severed from Christ. You have fallen away from grace. One other type of religious legalism takes the form of restoration of order rather than moral justice through religious rituals. This may be done for the sake of making things quote-unquote straight or orderly, more in balance or in harmony, or more pure or in peaceful coexistence. And this could be a realignment of forces either in the natural world, like the natural elements, or in the spiritual world. One example of this is Shinto, which is more of a Japanese cultural expression, a way of seeing the world, than it is a transcendent and complete religion. Prayers, as well as purification and cleansing rituals, are performed regularly for people by priests at Shinto shrines, not to be purified of moral evil or to repent of sin, but rather to quote-unquote restore natural order. The goal is quote-unquote peaceful coexistence, order, and balance by appealing and soothing impersonal spiritual forces. Essentially, animistic practices like these are a form of legalism that seeks to deal with the problems in the world without addressing human moral failure. It seeks to treat only the symptoms while the Bible reveals the cause of disorder, the problem of sin, as well as the solution, faith in Jesus unto restoration. Legalism takes many different forms, but they all identify problems and then seek to restore them through false spiritual activities.